Fluxion installed, let's see how we can use it to run an Evil Twin attack automatically against a WPA or a WPA2 network. So first of all, you want to navigate to the location where you installed Fluxion. So in my case, it's installed in OPT Fluxion. So we're going to do CD OPT Fluxion. I'm going to do ls to list. And like I showed you in the previous lecture, the file that we want to run is this executable. So we're going to do bash fluxion.sh. I'm going to hit enter. And the first thing that it's going to do is it's asking me to select the language that I want to run the program with. Now I want to run it in English. So I'm going to put number one because that's the number that corresponds to English. So I'm going to put one. And now it's asking me whether I want to look for networks on all channels or on a specific channel. I want to look for networks on all channels. And therefore, I'm going to put again number one. This will automatically show an arrow dump ng window in here, as you can see. And this will list all the networks around me. Now, I want to target this UPC network. So once you see the network that you want to target, just click on this window and then do Control C to go back to Fluxion. There you can see Fluxion is showing me the networks that I can target. And the one that I want to target, like I said, is this UPC network. And you can see that it's using WPA2 on channel 1. And its ID is number 3. So if we want to target this network, all we have to do is just put number 3. Now it's asking me which method I want to use to generate the fake access point. So when I was doing this manually, remember I said host APD is the tool that all the tools or all the other scripts use to create their fake access point. And as you can see here, the first option will use host APD and the second option will use Airbase NG, which I actually covered it as well in a previous lecture in my network course. So I'm going to go for number one to generate the fake access point using host APD. Then it's asking me to give it the location where I stored my handshake. The reason why it asks for the handshake, because Fluxion will go for one extra step, like I said, and it'll go and verify the password entered by the user. So it's going to make sure that the password is correct before it shows it to us. Now you can, you can skip this by press and enter. Or if you capture the handshake, like in my case, I've actually captured it before. I'm going to give it to it, so I'm going to say it's stored in root, and it's called handshake01.cap. Now, I've actually covered capturing the handshake before in a full lecture, so I'm not going to cover it right now, and I'm just going to give the file where the handshake is stored. Now, you can also just not type anything and hit enter, and it'll automatically capture the handshake for you. But since I've captured it, I have gave it its path, and I'm just going to hit enter. Now it's telling me the handshake is corrupt, but it's not. So it's also asking me if I want to try aircrack ng instead of pirate to verify the handshake. So I'm going to say yes, please do that. And that's going ahead now. Now the next step is it's asking me to create an SSL certificate or search for on. So I'm going to go with number one to create the certificate. Now, as you can see now, it's actually going through similar steps to the ones that we went through manually. We just had to do all these commands individually, configure our web server individually and all that. Now it's asking me what I want to do right now for the attack. If I want to select a web interface, that's the only option that I have. So I'm going with number one. And now it's actually given me a number of interfaces that I can use. So this is the interface or the web page that will be displayed to the target once they connect to our network. So first of all, it has generic interfaces. So it has a generic English one, a generic Arabic one, a generic French one, and so on. If you scroll down, 
you'll also see that there are interfaces based on the router. So we have a Belkin one, a Netgear one, a Virgin Media one, a TP-Link one, and so on. So if you know your target, for example, uses a TP-Link router, then you can just go for a 33 and let's go for that. And now this is automatically going to start the fake access point for me. It's going to start a DHCP server, a DNS server. It's going to start a web server, put the interface that I picked in that web server and configure it to support HTTPS and configure the URL redirect rules properly so that everything works as expected. So it's literally doing all the steps that I showed you before automatically. Now everything's running. We have the web server here. We have the DHCP and the DNS servers here. Now we combine both of, the, both of these and we use DNS mask instead, but they're using individual servers for it. And we also have the jammer here, which will deauthenticate all clients from the network so that they'll think that there's something wrong and connect to our evil twin. Okay, now I'm in my Windows machine. Now I've actually lost my connection. I was connected to my proper network, which, which is this one. And this is the evil twin. But I actually lost my connection even though I was connected because Fluxion automatically runs at the authentication attack. So if I try to connect right now, and you can see it's configured to connect automatically. But if I connect right now, it's just going to keep loading and it's just going to keep go on and on and on and on. And it'll actually never let me in. So basically, Fluxon will automatically start a deauthentication attack where connected clients will lose their connection. And even if they try to connect again, they won't be able to connect. So hopefully they're going to think that there's something wrong with this network. They're going to click on cancel and they're going to connect to the next network that has the same name. And that's my evil to a network. That's my fake access point. Now, if we connect to this, you'll see I'll automatically get a login page asking me to put my password. But there is an issue with this page that's getting displayed automatically. Now, I'm going to address this issue in the next lecture. But if you, if you see this bar right here, it says that you must log into this network before you, before you can access the internet. If we open the login page in here, you'll see the login page gets displayed properly. And we actually have a very nice login page. It's still not that there is a firmware upgrade. So it's still not that our router needs to be upgraded. It's saying there is a new version. Uh, please accept and install. If you look at the agreement, it looks legit. And it actually says that you have a TP-Link router. So if you know that your target uses a TP-Link router from the network name or from the internet provider, then this looks very believable. Now, if we also go to any other website, for example, if we go to bing.com, you'll see the same page being displayed properly. And even if we go to Facebook, you'll see it's going to ask us to log in. And when we click on the login, we'll see the nice login. So the only problem is the page that gets loaded automatically. And we'll address that later on. For now, let's test this and see if it works. So I'm going to agree with the terms. And then I'm going to put my password. I'm going to click on the start upgrade. And as you can see, you see a very nice loading bar. Full in the target that there is an upgrade actually happening in the background. But if we go back to the Kali machine, you'll see that we managed to get the password. Now Fluxion, like I said, will actually go and check the password that the user enters against the handshake. So it won't let the user through unless they put the right WPA key. So right now it went ahead and it checked that the key that the user entered is the correct key. And now it's telling us that the password is 1234 ABCD. And it checked this with aircrack NG. So this is definitely the right password. Our next video is debugging and fixing login interface. So please don't forget to hit like subscribe if you like this video. Thank you.